let us see about dual converter we have already seen about three phase fully controlled rectifier which operates in two quadrants it is otherwise called two quadrant converter it can have um, positive or negative voltage the average voltage can be positive or negative depending upon the firing angle if alpha is less than 90 degree you will get positive voltage and when alpha is greater than 90 degree you will get negative voltage but current will be always positive because thyristors are unidirectional devices so it can carry current in one direction only so the best example for four quadrant operation is hoist which is used in construction site it has four operations first thing you have a loaded cage and you want to uh, bring this load from bottom to the top floor so you may have to operate in forward motoring mode because this is heavy load you have to bring it to top against gravity so you have to do motoring suppose if you want to bring this load down what happens due to gravity it will fall down quickly so you have to apply brake and then bring the load down similarly you might uh, want to uh, take the empty cage up or empty cage can be brought down so there are four modes of operation to be done by a hoist so in this video we will see about the four quadrant converter so how to get a four quadrant operation with this three phase fully controlled rectifier so fully controlled rectifier we have seen that it can operate only in two quadrants so if i want this two quadrant that is yellow color quadrants I have to connect another converter in anti parallel with this one because if I connect it in the same direction again I will get only 1 and 4 quadrant. So if I want in these two quadrant I have to connect a converter in anti parallel to this one so that I can get uh, reverse the current through the load or current through the load can flow in both directions. So you take first a yeah, three, uh, three phase fully control rectifier, connect another converter in anti parallel and load is connected in between. And uh, the numbering of the devices is same. Uh, here one is added to indicate this represents converter one. So in all the devices extra one is added and here 2 is added to indicate that this is converter 2. Remaining numbering is same. And you have to remember one thing. Between thyristor 1 and 4, A phase is connected. So you remember here, between 1 and 4, A phase should be connected. So by this way, you can get 4 quadrant operation. Let us see the working of an ideal dual converter. So it has dual converter. So two converters are there. Converter 1 and converter 2 with the load connected in between them. And this diode is used to represent the direction of the current supplied by the converter. So this converter will give the current in this direction. Whereas for converter to current flows in this direction. So current here flows in this direction whereas here it flows in this direction. So two converters are in parallel, anti-parallel and load is also connected in parallel. So you have to make the voltages equal that is you give the firing angle such that this converter 1 and converter 2 
produces a same output voltage. So V0 equal to V01 is equal to minus V02. So how to get this one? So this minus sign indicates that the voltages are out of phase. And in case of a single phase converter, we can uh, we know the average output voltage is 2 Vm by pi cos alpha. So here I have eliminated that 2 by pi because it gets cancelled anyhow. This side also you will get 2 Vm by pi. Both will get cancelled. So cos alpha 1 is equal to minus cos alpha 2 where minus cos alpha can be written as cos of 180 minus alpha. So finally you will get alpha 1 plus alpha t equal to 180 degree. So what in it uh, means when this converter is operating at alpha is 30 degree this should have 150 degree or if this converter 1 acts as a rectifier this should act as a inverter so that the voltages average voltages of both the converters will be equal if we take a practical converter though the average voltages are equal the instantaneous voltage will be out of phase it will not be equal there will be a difference between the instantaneous voltage only average voltage will be equal because of that we know that whenever there is a voltage difference current will flow suppose this load is constant and it carries 10 amps when this instantaneous voltages are not equal this converter will supply the load current as well as due to the voltage difference another current will also flow between the converter that is called circulating current so this current will be circulating between the converters so this will lead to losses and which will reduce the efficiency of the converter there are two modes of operation dual converter without circulating current and with circulating current now let us see about the first case dual converter without circulating current so this is the circuit we have already seen so in this case only one converter will be in operation at a time suppose this converter one is in operating operation this will supply the load this will supply the load current now if you want to reverse the current through the load in this direction if you want to operate you remove the gate pulses for this one and give sufficient time for this thyristor to turn off completely so that the current through the load becomes zero okay once the current through the load becomes zero give the firing pulse for this converter and turn it on so the current through the load get reversed so in this case you have to give sufficient time for the outgoing thyristor this converter to turn off otherwise commutation failure will occur so initially one converter will be on if you want to turn off uh, turn off this one turn off this one make the current through the load to zero after that you switch on the other converter so in this case there is no problem of circulating current the second one is dual converter with circulating current so here two converters will be operation at any time if this one acts as a rectifier this will act as a inverter so the converter output voltage is v01 and this converter output voltage is v02 and if you see the uh, instantaneous voltage though the average voltages will be equal instantaneous voltages will not be equal there will be a difference in instantaneous voltage because voltages will be out of phase 
So, because of this voltage difference, a current will flow between these circuit. Load current will be constant. The remaining current will be flowing through the converters, between the converters. So, this is called circulating current. This leads to losses. So, normally a reactor will be inserted between uh, the two converters to limit the magnitude of this circulating current. So, this is converter 1 voltage, converter 2 voltage, this is load voltage and this is called reactor voltage. So, which is used to limit the circulating current. Now, let us draw the waveform. So, we have seen that alpha equal to 60 degree. So, alpha 2 should be 180 minus 60 that is 120 degree. So, this is the line voltage waveform. We know if it is a line voltage waveform, uh, the reference should be 60 degree. So, you have to calculate alpha 1 from this reference of 60 degree. So, 60 plus 60, 120 degree this thyristor T1 should start. So, alpha 2 120 plus 60. So, at 190 degree converted to should conduct. So, this table we have seen already in the previous video how to write this one. So, if it is T1 write A first. 6 belongs to B phase. So, write B. So, always write the upper device phase first, then lower device phase. So, now we will draw the converter 1 voltage. So, first uh, when T1 should conduct means you have to follow voltage VAB. So, where is VAB waveform? This brown color waveform. So, Alpha 1 starts here. So, follow VAB waveform till this one. Okay. Then, VAC waveform. So, VAC is this blue color dotted line. So, follow that. Then, VBC waveform. VBC is this green color. So, follow this one. Okay, so now you can draw this one separately. That is the converter 1 voltage. Okay, so you can write VAB, VAC, whatever it is coming. Similarly, you can draw for uh, converter 2. So for converter 2 also, same procedure. So you will get this waveform. So if you see here, why you are getting in uh, opposite direction because converter is turned on here so at this point you have to follow what is vba waveform vba waveform is here so you are following this waveform let me take So, VBA waveform is here. So, you follow this waveform. After that, VCA. After that, VCB. Okay. So, like this, you have to draw the waveform. So, you can see that between this and this, the waveform. The converter average voltage will be same, but they are out of phase. That is when it is high value, it is zero. And when this has high value, it has zero. So they are out of phase. But if you find the average value, it will be same. So because of this uh, difference in instantaneous voltage, you are getting the circulating current. 
so these waveforms we have already drawn the same waveform so we have to find what is v naught that is the voltage across the load so it is the average of two voltages v naught 1 plus v naught 2 divided by 2 so you add these two that is this high one value this is zero so if you add divided by 2 you will get this point similarly this is zero this has a high value so you will get the same value here so in between you will get some maximum value so this is how you have to draw the v naught waveform next vr waveform that is the voltage across the reactor so vr is equal to difference of these two voltages v naught 1 minus v naught 2 that is equal to you can find any one period you take this period vab here it is vbc so v naught 1 is vab and v naught 2 is vbc so you subtract these two so this you can find it from that waveform itself so if you find vab and vbc waveform there will be a phase difference of 120 degree so so this is vm sin omega t means vbc should be vm sin omega t minus 120 degree so if you subtract these two you will get root 3 times sin omega t plus 30 degree so you can draw the phasor diagram and find out this one it is very easy so we are you have completed then how to find ic from this one vr is equal to l into dic by dt okay so what is ic integral of integrate vr you can find what is ic instead of doing that calculation simply from by seeing the waveform you can draw it this has a maximum value so this should be zero and this has a maximum value so this should be zero in between you have a zero value so a term if you differentiate a term it will have zero only when it is maximum so you will get a maximum point here so this is how the circulating current will be so this is load current we have assumed to be constant so it's a constant load current so converter one will supply this load current plus circulating current so add these two you will get this converter one converter two is nothing but this circulating current same current so this is how you have to draw this waveform so if you see the advantages of circulating type converter wherever you want to reverse the load current frequently uh, for example i told uh, hoist application where you have to move up or down or you have to do the, um, reverse the load current continuously you can go for this type circulating type and this has a faster response because you are no need to wait for some delay to turn off the thyristor disadvantages if you see uh, the reactor is required to limit the circulating current uh, as the circulating current increases size of the reactor increases if size increases cost increases and this reactor will lead to more losses because current is flowing through it and there will be losses so because of that efficiency of this system will get lowered and this um, has to carry the converter has to carry load current plus circulating current so the rating of the thyristor will be high so the points to remember here are two three phase fully controlled converters can be connected in anti parallel to get the dual converter or four quadrant operation there are two types dual converter without circulating current which is similar to a three phase fully controlled converter so only one will be in operation at any time but you have to give sufficient time for ser to commutate the second type with uh, circulating current 
both the converters will operate the same time with one acting as a rectifier and the other acting as a inverter so dual converters are used for supplying four quadrant dc motor drives these are some of the references and if you like the video do subscribe to our read electric vehicle channel thank you